just go down as one of the all-time great entrances. Uh, let's figure this one out. You're going to describe it for the viewing audience. I have to do that? Yes, you We've do. been all around the world and in a few neighborhoods, but this is right up there. I wrote that song. They were in riffs last night, weren't they? back in 1990 where Martinez claimed that his shoes were tampered with, that he was sliding all over the ring. He was preoccupied by that. There was an investigation later on. It was inconclusive. And of course, he was stopped in the ninth round. Hasn't lost since. And now he's got the opportunity to redeem himself or take on the boxing's longest reigning world champion, Orlando Canizales. Does he still have the punching power he had before? His, his last fights have been with Sam Duran when 12.
scoreboard is dropping, wilting at ringside. Must have been 110. David Mercado has the official introduction of our main event from San Jose. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. The Battle of the Little Giants. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Bantamweight Championship of the World. Representing and supervising from the IBF, Mr. Jim Rondo. Your timekeeper in counting the knockdowns, Mr. Stan Gordon. Your judges are Gwyn Adair, Robert Exton, and Ronnie Ralston. At the sound of the bell, the man in charge of this 12-round championship bout is Mr. Lou Moritz. First, fighting out of the blue corner, this young man tipped the scales at 118 pounds even. His professional record consists of 29 wins, only one defeat, 15 of those wins coming by the knockout route. He is wearing his native Mexican flag colors of green, white, and red. Currently ranked number eight by the IBF. He is the current WBC America's Continental Bantam Champion from San Jose, your very own Gerardo Martinez. Fighting out of the ten out of the red corner, this young man tipped the scales out of fit trim, 118 pounds even. His professional record consists of 35 wins, only one defeat, one draw, 26 big KOs. He is wearing the royal blue trunks with the red and white trim and handles from Laredo, Texas. Please welcome the IBF Bantamweight Champion of the World, Orlando Connor. Tokyo, take a look at the tail of the tape. Pretty similar. Well, as we had said, right, we have Orlando Canizales, by the way, at 28 years of age, and Martinez the other way around. Height's about the same, the weight's the same, and of course the reach is the same. We want to point out that Orlando Canizales came in three quarters of a pound overweight, had to take it off after the weigh-in, had no problem dropping it, though. He enjoyed us for dinner after the <laughs> last night. Did you pick up that check? Yes, I did. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I mean, I just left the table. <laughs> Little Giants, 12 rounds, the IBF Bantamweight Championship as Orlando Canizales looks to continue his travel on the record books in that division. Looking for a title defense tonight of number 14. The longest reigning world champion in the world today. Look for Martinez to come at him, start fast. Canizales not known for being a fast starter. Great counter puncher. I would use the word brilliant counter puncher when talking about Canizales. It specializes in throwing very good short hooks and short crosses. Martinez coming out just like the Canizales camp had predicted, right at Canizales, and not going to be wasting any time putting the pressure on. Canizales looks a little dry to me, Yui. Yes, he does. I agree. When you're starting a, you know, you're an infamous slow starter to begin with, you think you've come in a little wetter. And Martinez, don't look for a lot of style, look for him to come straight on. And he's got this crowd very much behind him here in San Jose. Yeah, first couple rounds for a challenger, very critical just to the psychological. And right now he is uh, on the aggression. And Thomas Ellis, as you said, looking cold. You said one of the world-class counterpunchers is Orlando Canizales will take a look at his opponent, figure it out, and then start pecking away. And he has been going into the later rounds. A little bit more workmanship, you know. Maybe he doesn't have to work as hard because of his experience and carry things that make it a little easier for himself. Martinez not uh, putting any style points and left him in the locker room. He's just coming right at Canizales. But certainly in the case of his fight with Bones Adams, I mean, gee, he broke Adams' jaw in two places. You think you'd get a fighter out of there because of that until they finally stopped the fight prior to the 12th round. 19-year-old Adams gave him a good fight, too. Martinez pressuring Gonzalez against the ropes. Gonzalez trying to spin off and get some counter shots. And nice overhand right by the champion. It's almost like Orlando has to get his dander up. He's such a uh, kind of calm 
Ridge Puncher. He's got only 15 KOs in his 29 wins, but can be deceptive. He puts the right combination together. He can't hurt Ken. Right hand, good right hand, right up the gut.
exchange was fairly equal. That one wasn't. I'll tell you, Orlando continues to amaze me with his repertoire of all the punches.
stopped by Lou Moret, the referee. Martinez just continues to pressure Catalazales. Even though he's 28 years old, veteran of a lot of wars and 150 amateur fights, you never know when your legs are going to go. 238 professional rounds for Orlando Canizales and many in the past four years have been real wars. Continues to land the shots, the cleaner shots anyway, but Martinez pressuring, pressuring, pressuring. Canizales' cheek looking a little puffy on the left side and I watched him bite down on it. I wonder if he's hurt his jaw. Lumeret really letting these banner breaks just he's not been one to break up any minutes 22 seconds of the fourth round referee Lou Moritz stops about and the winner and still IBF Bantamweight champion of the world Orlando Gonzalez. there had been some question about his punching power no more Tokyo Rosenthal is going to be talking to a big round of time for San Jose we're going to get up to Tokyo here in just a second. Already taken. Orlando, 14 and counting. Oh, yeah, you know, this this one was, uh, you know, coming in his hometown, it, it was a and win as impressive as I did. It was, it's a sweet victory, you know, and, you know, especially, you know, like I said, in his hometown. So, you know, I'm real glad it, it's over. I'm happy to make my fourth telling thing. Well, the first round, it was a classic save by the bell. You rocked him. They thought it was a slip. We watched it back on the replay. You clearly was from the punch. But anyway, when he got up, he had already touched. You knocked him back down, and the bell saved him. Oh, yeah. You know, I caught him real good with a, I remember it was, I don't remember if it was a right or left hook, but he went down, but, you know, he was determined. He has a lot of heart. He came, he fought back. 
And it was a tough fight. I mean, I knew it was going to be a tough fight, but it was tougher than I expected. We were surprised. Second and third round. You know, we thought you might jump on him a little earlier, but he was coming on. Fourth round, we were actually sitting there not knowing exactly what your strategy was. You laid back on the ropes, and bang, you flung off the ropes, and that's when you caught him. Yeah, well, you know, that was... Uh, I knew he was going to come forward, and, he, you know, he has a lot of stamina, a great condition. I knew he was going to come forward all the time, so I was just, you know ducking and watching what he was throwing because he's kind of he, he was kind of looping all his shots and, and I knew what uh, I was just focused and concentrating. Okay now you got a situation you've won 14 you're looking for that record you said that's all important to you for the 15th consecutive. Bob Jesse maybe you can fill us in what's next? Well we're gonna you know sit back down but what we like to do is turn right around and keep him active uh, we're looking at May 21st and unless something else happens between now and then he doesn't have a scratch on him. This was a very tough fight in a tough situation coming here to a very game kid's hometown and Orlando he just showed what a what a tremendous fighter he is and uh, you know history's going to look very favorable on him. Okay we have to we can't leave without bringing this up. Junior Jones what's the story? That's the fight everybody wants to see. We want to see the great matchup. Where are we at with that? Uh, I mean we're not anywhere with it. We've HBO's uh, mentioned they might want to do something with us, but we, we've had no formal negotiations about the fight. Jones was our mandatory two years in a row and our number one contender. If he wanted to fight us, all he had to do was say so, and he passed. So, you know, now they're saying, hey, we want him, we're ducking him, whatever. But uh, he's a good fighter in his own right. But, you know, we it doesn't matter to us who it is. We're here, we're ready, and this is the, the greatest bantamweight of all times. Orlando, you feel the same way about the Jones situation? Oh, yeah, I feel the same way, and I think it's just a matter of time, and, and it, it, everything's possible. I, I, you know, I, I, I want the, a lot of people would, would like to see that fight, and, and hopefully that fight will come about soon. Well, one more win to Manuel Ortiz's record of 15, and then maybe 19 overall, which he has as well. A couple of months, you break the Panama Al Brown record, right? I think that one's in the bag. So we wish you good luck. Hope to see you back here soon. And back to you, Malay, at ringside. Thank you, Tokyo. A very emotional win by the champion, Orlando Canizales. As you see, his corner coming out quickly to carry the champion 14 times. They've done that for a very talented 28-year-old out of Laredo, Texas. Orlando Canizales upping his mark the 36-1-1. And, one. and uh, as far as an emotional win for the Canizales camp, I don't think I've seen a more emotional reaction to a victory in a long time. They really want that record. They're going after it. Uh, they feel that he's on the uh, top of his game and certainly tonight showed a very pro Martinez crowd that he is ready to take on all comers. Our next bout, middleweight's four-rounder Sergio Guerrero taking on John Copeland. That is a scheduled four-rounder and uh, a very business-like corner is usually Orlando Canizales, but after today, Tokyo, I like you said, you've done a lot of Canizales cards. I've done about seven or eight of them. I have never seen a more emotional reaction, and I think the closer they get to the record, I think it gets more emotional. As we await the next bout here, as we see Bob Spagnol and promoter Cedric Kushner uh, talking at ringside. A big, big victory, a fourth round knockout. He put him down once in the first round, seriously hurt early in the second. Then Martinez came on late in the second and the third. And the fourth, Canizales just put him down. Gerardo Martinez dropping his mark to 29 and two. And there's the manager, Bob Spagnola, ex accepting the plot at set ringside. Well, Yui, you know, when you talk about it being emotional, there was something going on in that fight. We saw the corner of Martinez yelling over. How did Spagnola think about that? Was he worried? So I think there was something going on in the local, you know, area here. He came into this guy's backyard, knocked him down in the first round. Clearly a save by the bell. This kid came on tough in the second and third round. We thought that Canizales' legs were gone in the fourth, and it was some sort of a ploy. He came, bounced off those ropes like a WWF oh, move. He's and caught him and then and then put the finishing touches on like nobody does like Orlando Canizales. And we mentioned earlier, I think one of the things that you gotta really applaud is that the corner has been the same for his entire career. He hasn't changed trainers, he didn't get disgruntled with somebody when he won a title, he didn't get, get disgruntled with them when he lost his fight to Paul Gonzalez. He said that was a turning point in his career. 
you know, agrees that he lost that fight and doesn't even consider it his toughest fight. He's had the same management. Uh, he's got a very good promoter in Cedric Kushner. Keeps him busy, keeps him active, and he's got a goal. Hasn't moved up in weight. He stayed 118 pounds all these years. We, we ate away on the three weight classes at dinner last night. I at mean, least. And this guy literally has stayed at 118. He doesn't get any higher than 125, he says. Always in tremendous condition. And showing tonight that he does certainly deserve top five ranking is the best pound for pound in the world. I mean, he, he, he's been there. He's taken on everybody. The Junior Jones thing is something that'll come around when everybody's ready to put the money on the table. Uh, I, I really appreciate Bob Spagnola's uh, honesty about that. It's not even close. It's not going to happen. Uh, it will happen, but it's not on the table right now.